Hi developers, my name is Ashraf Banalaya and today we are going to see something new. Today we are going to integrate Swagger inside .NET Core MT project. Swagger as you know is for documentation and we are not talking about Word or PDF documentation, no, but we are going to document our API to the client or to ourselves or to the team so they can use it. First. We are going to integrate Swagger, see how it works, and then we are going to integrate or write how we can uh, define different version of the project and how it can be documented in Swagger. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to create a new empty project from here. Create a new project. We are going to choose SP.NET Core Web Application. Next, we are going to call this Swagger YouTube Demo. And let's create the project. Of course, well, I'm going to use a API template. And you can see the project started being created. Now, some of the developers may not document their project or endpoints, but when you have like 50 or 60 methods that you want to, to understand, you are not just going to uh, use Postman for each one. You need to document this so you can understand your project. First of all, I'm going to manage NuGet package and I'm going to install the extension that we are going or the new get package that we are going to use for that I'm going to choose the first one here and I'm going to install the latest stable version click install okay I accept we are going to see it's quite simple to integrate swagger inside any project first of all we are going to start up and here we are going under this inside the configure services and we are going to register our swagger generator as you can see here i need to use the open api here model cool and we are going to add two lines here when we are going to tell our system that we are going to use a swagger and for the UI we are going to have the first version and the description right here okay as you know where you are going when you launch your project on here using the debug mode it's going to default controller which is right here with the forecast controller but for me I wanted to start by launching swagger each time I run the project so I'm going here to properties, debug, and gonna get rid of this and change it by swagger. Save this and let's run the project. It's running. the browser is launching for the first time sometimes it take time but usually only on the first time okay cool now we have swagger already integrated in less than four minutes of time we have integrated swagger and we have it working right here and you can see your endpoint you can see the server response and you can see even the schema of your model cool now if you want just to add documentation here you're done you can add it in less than four minutes now what if your client 
um, tell you that he want to keep this but he want a new version or your system is developing a new version or new updates for your CRM for example and you are going to add new functionalities but you need to keep this going and also add the second version so both of them will be working together okay let's see how to do this first of all I'm going here to do something I'm going to create folder v1 another folder v2 and I'm going to add two new controllers here controller API and let's keep it like that okay here we have our controller I'm just going to add some functionality to our controller okay now this is the first controller and I'm going to add the controller with the same name and functionalities here under the V2 and they have both the same functionalities cool now if we run this swagger it's not going to work why he will not understand the difference between those two controllers for him there is two controllers and there is no difference between them and he doesn't know what to put here okay so we are going to do some changes here if we add this is let me add this we are going to tell him this is the version one and this is the version 2 so he can understand that and let's run this and see what happens cool here we have the first version and the second version both of them are here and both of them are working as you can see cool now we have two versions are working on the same time but I do not want this to be on the same as a page I want when I click here I will go to the second version of my API and when I go there I only see the second version I do not want to have all this here in the same page so let's do this so first of all I'm going to go to the startup project I'm going to come in this and I'm going to add a few things that I have already prepared inside our service we are going to define our versions and also we are going to add a description for our API I'm going to add a title, a description, a term of services and a license if you have a license for the project so here I'm going to use open API to add my contact information I'm going to use a swagger as we used it before to add description but I'm going to also to add the open API info that we have added right here cool Okay, there is something here. Oops. Let me just get rid of this. Okay, cool. One more thing. Here I'm going to describe the second version. But the problem here is each time I'm going to add a new version, I'm going to add this v2 v3 v4 what if we tell the swagger that each time he to read the number after the v depending on the folder uh, i should call it so let's add a new method here to group 
the swagger documentation by name okay so here each time it's going to be colored it will going to read the api version starting with v and it will group it by api version so it depends on the name one more thing to do is to add a call to dates inside the services here we are going to add this method Cool. Great. Let's clean our solution and let's run the project and see if this is going to actually work. Cool. You can see here we have our description already added, the term of services, the website, the email, and the license. Here we have the first version of our API already here. Let's go here. Yes, we have the second version. And you can see, if you go to the second version, oops, it's not going. Yep, it's not changing because I made a mistake, I think. Yes, here, I need to stop here and change this to V2, that was the problem. Let's run the project again. Now I am sure it will work. Okay, let's go to second version. Yes, here we have the second version. Okay. Okay, let's go to the first version. Cool. We can even make some changes here. So, I'm going to get rid from all of this. And I'm going to run the project again. Later I'm going to share this in a blog post and source code of course. How to do this. Okay, let's run the first version. Okay. Let's go to second version. Oh, so as you can see here for the summary, for the first version, all of them have what they have right here. For the second version, it's completely different. Each one have its summary. Cool. Now we have seen how to implement Swagger inside .NET Core. Next, maybe we will see how to add authorization and authentication to this. Thank you. If you want need to add anything or to improve anything you can write me down on youtube or you can just text me or maybe uh, use the website to reach me out thank you don't forget to subscribe subscribe to my channel and thank you